Howard Storm had always considered himself to be a free thinker. He was also an avowed atheist. To him, belief in God was absurd. But a trip to Paris in 1985 changed all that. Oh! 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 Honey! Howard! Storm was diagnosed with a perforation in his small intestines. In a Paris hospital, Howard's condition weakened until believing he was near death, he said goodbye to his wife and shortly after slipped into unconsciousness. When I opened my eyes, I found myself standing next to the bed and I thought, this is impossible because just moments before I'd been dying. Then I saw Beverly, my wife, sitting in the chair opposite me on the other side of the bed and I tried to talk to her but she acted like she couldn't see me or hear me no one could see me or hear me and then I heard voices calling me from outside the room these people outside the room were saying hurry up come with us we've been waiting for you a long time you've got to go now and I thought they'd come to help me I kept asking them who they were but they just insisted that they had come for me, they had been waiting for me, and it was time to go with them. So I thought they were to take me to my operation, and I went with them. They started to push and pull at me, yelling and screaming at me, and I fought back as hard as I could. There were dozens of them, maybe hundreds, thousands. There's no way to tell in that darkness, swarming all over me. The more I fought, the more vicious they became. To my horror, I realized that they were tearing me apart, consuming me. All of them were laughing and taunting me, and the more they hurt me, the better they liked it. As I lay there on the ground in a fetal position, trying to protect myself from their kicks and their taunting, I heard a voice say, pray to God, and I thought, I don't believe in God. How can I pray? And a second time, it said, pray to God, and a third time, and it came out all mixed up with the 23rd Psalm and the Pledge of Allegiance and the Lord's Prayer, just little bits of them that I could remember. But the people around me hated any mention of God, and they were screaming at me. And in my desperation, I yelled out into the darkness, Jesus, please save me. And with that, a tiny light appeared in the darkness and became very bright. And it was the most brilliant, beautiful light that lifted me up and filled me with ecstasy. And I knew absolutely that this was the Jesus that I'd believed in as a child. He took me out of that horrible place that I now know was hell. And we began to approach heaven. With Jesus and the angels that he called over to us, we went over my life from its beginning to the end and I was so ashamed of the things that I had done in my life. But the important thing is I knew that God loved me and Jesus and the angels loved me in spite of the things that I had done. And eventually they told me that I had to come back into this world which was almost unbearable to me to be separated from them. But I knew that through their love for me and my love for them that I would never be separated from God or the heavenly beings or Jesus again. Incredible as his experience sounds, Howard Storm remains convinced it was real. In fact, that experience brought about a radical change in Howard's life and transformed him from an unbelieving atheist to a committed believer. He credits that single event for causing a complete turnaround in his life. I think the most important thing about near-death experiences is the way people's lives are changed. It has been studied by scientists that people who've had near-death experiences lose their fear of death. But more importantly, people who have had near-death experiences know that there is a governing love that rules the universe and they want to be a part of it. And their lives are changed for the better to be a part of that love.